Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back today. So I am doing the best of five, my top five picks, my viewers picks of our favorite furniture flips. We purchased this piece for $25 off our the antique mall that we have our booth in and it was an amazing piece but all the glass was broken out of it luckily except for the glass that was left in the doors chris went ahead and made new shelves for this beauty so he made them out of plywood and some one by and then routed it so it would have a nice clean edge and then a nice middle brace that went in the middle of it so if you decided to put something heavy on it that it would not weigh these shelves down. Since this was going to be a painted piece, Chris just spackled over all the edges, any of the imperfections of the plywood, any nail holes, so that when he sanded it, it would be nice and smooth and just look like one consistent piece of wood. And re to replace the side panel of glass that was missing, he just used some standard white beadboard. So for this piece, we were using Kills Paint and Primer in one. It's a ready gallon that you get right off the shelf at Walmart. We paint a good percentage of our pieces just white using this paint. We absolutely love it. We live in a farming community, so white pieces sell real well for us. So this video is part of a collaboration. So there is a playlist in my description box of all the wonderful furniture flippers. Please click down on their links below and check out their top five. Hopefully you are seeing somebody new for the first time and maybe you're seeing me new for the first time. So welcome. Since you would be able to see through the glass of the doors into the back, we tied in beadboard to finish off the back of this cabinet also. And that ties in with the sides of the beadboard. So we did choose to keep the lighting system on this cabinet, even though you won't be able to see all the way through because there's no longer any glass shelves. It's just a nice little accent piece. It'd be a nice night light. So this piece ended up selling for $300 and we didn't even have to take it into the booth. A local viewer had watched the video and wanted to purchase it. Our next flip I like to call a Frankenstein piece. We were given these drawers by a friend who had a built-in kind of armoire system and she just couldn't, didn't have the heart of burning them and she thought about us and thought maybe that we could create something out of them. So the same thing with these drawers. My brother-in-law and his wife had just bought a new house and they had a room that had just this whole line of drawers. And the same thing, they thought that maybe somehow we could repurpose these drawers. So this next piece, I actually bought thrifting. I bought it for $25. You can tell that somebody had tried to make two side tables out of probably what was a vanity. It just was not a complete piece, but I just absolutely love the detail on the doors of the and just thought that Chris could make something out of it. The first thing that Chris did was make a little cabinet so that he had a place for those two smaller drawers to slide in and out of. Now using two of the bottom pieces of the one of the drawers, he made a top hutch si system. Now the drawers kind of had a beveled edge so he had to kind of make an insert so that it inset and then he made a top piece for the hutch and a top piece for that two drawer system just using some nice plywood and then gave it a nice routered edge. Now you can see where I'm saying this is a Frankenstein, but none of these woods are matching. But once you start painting these, and we like to do a base color of black underneath our white paint sometimes because we like to distress the piece. We like that tone of that black showing through and then if you sand even harder when you're distressed and you get some of that natural especially since all these pieces of wood are not matching but at least with this black coat of paint we're starting off at square one now that they're all matching in black now with the detail missing of the drawers that they just do not match that interior of that bottom cupboard. So what I'm doing with them is I'm trying to get them a little bit closer to match and I'm just using the Waverly Antiquing Wax. This will just give that walnut look. It'll just darken these up. So I give the interior of these drawers a couple coats just so it is more matching than this lighter wood. 
So now that we have a couple coats of the black onyx, and this is yet again a ready to use right off the shelf at Walmart, I'm on, we're on to our Kills Paint and Primer in the flat white. And the same thing, it's a right off the shelf, 20 bucks a gallon. And so this is just going to tie all these pieces together. Now, sometimes when you get into your white paint, you get what they call bleed through. Some of these older vintage pieces they will bleed through so the nice thing is there's this product called shellac it is a wonderful stops the bleed through you may have to do one coat two coats but we always wait to see if it bleeds through with the second coat to see if we need to spray that on and then after the white paint is thoroughly dried and it's achieved the coat three four coats it depends on how much coverage you're getting with your white paint we go through and just destretch the edges that's where you can see where the black is showing through it depends on how hard you push that sandpaper if you want the black to show through or you want some of that wood to show through to protect that white paint and finish this piece up we're just using minwax finishing paste now i'm sure that you noticed in the bottom of these drawers they were homemade or the bottom fell out i'm not really sure but it was a paneling piece so to tidy this up i'm just using this contact paper i absolutely love this black and white and i actually get it at the dollar store and if they don't carry it i can always buy it on amazon so part of tying this piece together with the two drawers and the two cabinet doors i needed four matching doorknobs so as part of thrifting i'm always looking for hardware and i just happen to have four of these beautiful glass knobs that definitely tie in with that little detail piece on the doors so as chris had the pieces and parts and he thought he was finished all of a sudden i just saw a coffee bar and then i'm like that is too much space coffee pot below but that top needs another shelf so the, the great man that i am married to him and i am blessed to have willingly after a little coaxing i actually had this bar that i had thrifted i had not done anything with it and i thought wow that is just meant to be to hang some coffee cups over so this is definitely a frankenstein piece we did not really know what it was going to become but it became a coffee bar so adding this hanger and then chris building another shelf and giving that nice rudder edge so all the pieces and parts matched and going back in and painting that shelf yep you had to paint it black first and then paint it white to get it to distress the way that we needed it to and then yes we added these pieces to the back just kind of like a china hutch so that you didn't have a tippy top and that they were nice and secure though we had no idea what the pieces and parts of what this frankenstein piece was going to become but it definitely became a beautiful piece of furniture definitely our first coffee bar that we had ever done and just painting something and all the pieces to match just tied all these frankenstein pieces together mostly free so 25 dollars for that bottom piece and yes we had other woods and stuff we sold this beautiful coffee bar for 175 and it didn't even sit in our booth for a day So the chair on the right was a chair that I picked up for $5.09 at my local Goodwill. And then the chair on the left was part of a haul that we had bought a whole bunch of furniture that a friend had bought a warehouse that had a lot of pieces and parts of furniture in it. As a flipper, when I reupholster any type of furniture, 99% of the time I don't keep anything anything that's fabric i take everything off you can see how old this first chair was and i just like as especially as a flipper i like to start off with everything new when it comes to anything fabric so being that both of these chairs were way bit wobbly chris actually took the craig jig and tightened up all the joints of these chairs by slipping a screw in there and now that they're nice and secure and then I do give these chairs a good once over with the orbital sander just to make sure that there's not like this dog chewing, that there's not any big deep gouges in the wood. So now I was using the same black onyx from the previous furniture flip. We are just creatures of habit with what we use. And so I like to start off with the underside of the piece to get the most coverage. As you know, chairs have lots of little crevices to get into. 
So I sealed this paint in using polycrylic as a top coat and then proceeded to sand the edges to get the distressed look that I was going for. This was actually one of the first pieces of black that we had ever done. Then after steel wooling, finishing this paint off with some varathane finishing wax to seal it all in and protect. And after adding a new webbing and new padding and new batting, and then I like to reposter my pieces using the linen drop cloth. Yep, the drop cloth that painters use. I just buy it at Harbor Freight, Amazon. I just pre-wash it and no softener. And I just absolutely love the farmhouse look that I'm going for. I love to use this as my fabric. So yes, I could have left the chairs exactly like this, but since some of you may be new to my channel, and for you that are already my regular viewers that have already seen these videos, you absolutely know that I love green sack stripes. To just see the full tutorial of how I painted these stripes, you'll have to click on the regular video. Both of these chair sets sold for $150, and the first one I had posted on Instagram and a local friend had bought it, and then the other one I had made its way into my booth, and actually a local business outside of town that's a much bigger town bought it to resell in their own shop. Now, though this is a Frankenstein piece also, not anywhere near what the first piece was. I actually picked the top of this up for $35 at my local Goodwill. I knew that it was missing its base, but oh, just so absolutely beautiful. Just loved the detail of this piece and was hoping that Chris could create something. And I actually sat on this piece for quite a while trying to find the same type of furniture or the same type of wood, something to use for the base of this that would do it justice. So oddly enough, at my local Goodwill, here was this side table, this end table that was missing its top for $209. And of course, I thought to myself, Chris can just cut this in half and slap those legs on there and it will be a whole piece. Boy, I am what the good thing that he is the one who builds and I'm the one who thrifts. Now, the, as this is the quick storyline of how this Frankenstein piece got put together, it definitely these legs did not come off that four pieces of wood as easy as one might think. So this was our first big piece that we had ever painted black. Just with the detailing on that glass, it was kind of a brassy bronze that white would not have done that justice, so we chose to keep this piece black. Then we sealed the paint in using a polycrylic so that this flat black did not act like a chalk paint where we left white residue all behind because we knew we were going to distress this piece. Just give those sharp edges some distressing to bring out the beautiful detail and then run steel wool over the rest of the piece to take any of bumpiness so that it was a nice smooth piece. And then this was one of the first black pieces that we realized how the Waverly Antiquing Wax, how it just would richen that black paint up. We just absolutely love how it just brought that paint to another level. And like the other cabinet, we did leave this lighting system in. Even though we did not replace the glass, that would not be cost efficient. Or we actually did in the video try to use some glass that we had, but it was not the same length, so we could not cut it down. But the, the light is a nice feature to use as a nightlight just to brighten up and you can see, no, you can't see down all the other shelves, but it's just a nice accent. And then when I posted this piece on my Facebook page for $275, just so many people wanted to go in and get it. But the, the same business that bought the other chair out of town was able to snag it up first. So little footstools, little side stools are something that I do quite a lot of to resell in our retail booth. And I pick these up all the, all the time from 209 to 609. I just, I have a hard time leaving them behind when I see them at a thrift store. So for these stools, the first thing I always do is get them all prepped, get them sanded, get them cleaned, get any 
any oddities, getting them tightened if they're wonky, just whatever each individual stool needs because they are their individuals and I will end up painting them as individuals also even though I am doing them in a large group. So for the bottom of this stool that is metal and for this other little stool that is that press board I like to use Rust-Oleum paint and primer in one it, and especially for the way that these are built it's just nice to be able to use a spray can of paint on these to get better coverage. So basically all of my stools will be getting painted black first so I'm using that ready to use black onyx right off the shelf from Walmart and whether this is going to be their final coat or if this is their undercoat before I paint them white. This is just a process of how we like to distress, how I like to see three colors playing on each other. And then the, for the black pieces that are staying black, I will seal them in using polycrylic as a top coat. So for these two little stools, I envisioned them in white. So I am using Kills Paint and Primer 1 and I get this right off the shelf at Walmart. So yes, it would have been easy just to mass produce these and make them all be the same, but maybe it's the hairdresser in me of treating everybody as an individual. You don't mass produce hair, so I'm not going to mass produce items and make them look all the same. So when I got these two pieces sanded down, I just absolutely loved the grain of wood that I saw. So I went and I knew I was going to be staining the top of this metal one. I had no idea that I was going to be staining the top of this little stool, but my go-to stain is the dark walnut. And then I sealed my stain in using a few coats of polycrylic. Now I cannot say that I loved the color that this stained, though it was a nice even color, I just really didn't like it. So what I'm doing here is now I am going to a buffalo check the top of this. Nope, I've done this with paint, I've never done an over stain, but to see the full tutorial, I go ahead and click on the video in my description. And then I did buffalo check the top of this white stool also. So yes, this black square was that American flag. So on this one, I am going to do, be doing a simple green sack striping, one large stripe in the middle, and then two smiles on the side. So to finish off my black pieces, even with this green sack stripe, and even with, with that buffalo check, I am going to be distressing the sharp edges, taking, making sure that they're nice and smooth and finishing these darker pieces off, these black pieces off with some Waverly antiquing wax. And then I'm going to go in and distress these two pieces as well and then finish them up with some Verithane finishing wax. So these stools range from the price of $15 to $28. And the nice thing about a grouping is I can put one or two in my booth at a time and then one or when they sell, then I have inventory and then I can put the next one in. That is why I do groupings like this. This is not our day job. This is our secondary job. So it's nice to do groupings and have a stock on hand. What did you think of my best of 2020? Do you, did you agree with my picks and my viewers' picks? I It was really hard to decide, but wow, what a year it has been. All I can do is thank you all very much for your comments, your kind words, your support throughout this whole year. And remember that this is part of a clamp, so click down in my description box and check out all those other wonderful, creative, very talented furniture flippers. Part of my YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you're new to my channel, just hit that subscription button and along with the notification bell.